me again, welcome back to X Amelia X and a very special video. Well actually one of three very special videos because I have teamed up with Twining's Tea as they've just launched a brand new range of tea called Super Blends which are designed to be here for you in different ways every single day. Now I'm going to be doing three of these videos, sort of not interviewing but just chatting with three people in my life that help me in different ways. So those of you who watch my weekly vlogs will recognise this person sat next to me, those of you who don't, this is my BFF Lucy and we are are here today to talk about Twining's defense tea. So the defense tea is actually a green tea with lemon, ginger and echinacea. Echinacea, that's the one. And it's actually really, really tasty. I'm not a big fan of green tea normally. No, I find it quite bitter. Yeah. But I think the citrus really helps and ginger, I just, I'm a huge ginger fan. See, I'm not too keen on citrus, but I really like this. Yeah, this is <laughs> nice. Yeah, Lucy's not a lemon fan at all. Whenever we like, whenever I bake lemon cakes, which are my speciality, you can just see you forcing it down. Yeah, <laughs> you're not a fan of lemon, but I'm glad you like this one. I think it is definitely the ginger that sort of makes it like really nice and warming. So when I knew that we were going to be talking about the Super Blends Defense Tea, I was thinking, who am I going to pop in this video? It was obviously going to be Lucy because Lucy has just been there for me through so much stuff. Again, if you're a regular viewer of this channel, you will know that the. Last Last two years has been a bit of a whirlwind and I don't know what I would have done if I didn't have Lucy there as my first line of defence on the friend front. Friend front? That's really difficult to say with these teeth. Friend front. <laughs> I don't know about you but I I haven't ever really had that many friends. I've done like videos on it before but I just feel, I, I don't know, I kind of didn't have many friends at school and then I kind of had a few friends that were sort of friends of boyfriends as I grew up and then it's only really been sort of since I met you well, how long ago was that three years ago to four, four? Uh, oh my goodness me oh, long four time. Years. <laughs> <laughs> it stuck me all that time <laughs> but it wasn't since I kind of met you that I kind of had my own friends that I, I don't know I think it's really hard to make friends as an adult but why is it that we don't make friends with everybody there's got to be something special going on here because we put up with each other for four years what is it that kind of what do you think makes a friend sort of friend material? It's almost opening yourself up, isn't it, to mm. that, I think, because, like you said, it, between us, for example, there was, like, that work relationship. Yeah. And then it's almost taking that step into, yeah, opening like yourself the, up. The next level. Yeah, almost. which was, I think you invited me to, like, a body shop party. Oh, yeah. Didn't you? We had a body shop so party. So I suppose yeah. you see somebody out of context. Yeah. Whereas mm. usually I was texting you about, like, you know, how Wilson was on his walk. <gasps> Your dog's done another poo in the kitchen! <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and then you see somebody in more of a sort of a social yeah, uh, environment, I guess. It changes like the dynamic, doesn't it, yeah. of a relationship. It's if you've got somebody that maybe you work with and you think, I think I might be able to get on with this person, invite them to do something. Yeah. Like, just invite them out for coffee. It's a bit like dating, but for friends. You've got yeah, to sort of, it is, you've it? got to go on a few dates to see if you're compatible with this person. And then, if you are, take it to the next level. Mm. Not in that way. <laughs> so I guess, I suppose once you've made it from acquaintances to friends, you tend to be there for that person. Yeah. You tend to talk to that person about what's going on in your life, the good things and the bad things. Mm. I suppose Lucy has been there for me through all of the dark times and it's it's really important to have somebody there for you during those times but it's also you also need somebody like a friend to be there for you in the good times as well just mm. to like chat about everything in everyday life and yeah even bounce, mundane things yeah, just, yeah or to just, bounce ideas off yeah and you, you can you can be there for somebody in that way as well we have had so much fun over the past four years we've done so many things together and we've just had such a laugh but we've definitely sort of had some down times in both of our lives yeah, as well, haven't we really? Yeah. I don't think you can really go through four years and not have anything miserable happen at some point. Um, and I have openly spoken about my depression on my channels, uh, which I went through last year, and it was a really, really difficult time for me. But Lucy was just always there um, in so many different ways, and you really, really, well, it's no secret, you really helped me get through that. <laughs> Oh, oh, don't cry. Oh. But it's true, it, it's true. And it, sometimes it can be really difficult to be there for a friend. I mean, I know I wasn't the easiest to deal with when you've got depression because it's a very sort of selfish mindset to be in. You don't want to do anything. You literally have to drag people out of bed. What would you say is 
like the best way to be there for a friend who might be going through something a little bit difficult right now? I think you don't necessarily have to be like forcing, I don't know, conversation yeah. or get yourself out of the house. I think even if you just send a text and just go, you okay today? Or, you yeah. know, how are you? Or or even just say, okay, I'm, I'm just at the end of the phone or, you know, just pop round if you need to or, or ask me to come round. Yeah. You know, it doesn't, you know, I'm here if you need me. Mm. But equally, if you need some space, respect that. Yeah. Because I think it, a lot of the time people think if someone's going through something, I don't know, you might like drag them out on a big night on the town or whatever. But sometimes you just haven't got the mental energy to do that. So, I mean, you used to pop round and just have a cup of tea or whatever if you had sort of a spare half an hour on a lunch break or something and we just used to sit and a lot of the time we just didn't even talk we'd just sit there and we'd just drink a cup of tea watch a bit of this morning or whatever and then you'd be like right thanks see you later bye <laughs> and it's just I think it's just being there for someone and like you said just asking if someone's okay that's a really it's a good way to support a friend I think but it's not just the dark times that you can be there for somebody I remember when I got Toby uh, as a little puppy and I was single-handedly trying <laughs> literally sighs all the time every time we went like, mum this is so embarrassing <laughs> you're bringing up my childhood again mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but when I first got Toby it was really difficult single-handedly raising a puppy as a single puppy mummy and you were you were there for me all the time with that as well because obviously you've got experience with dogs but also because he was really cute and you're just an <laughs> awesome friend and it, you know you don't have it doesn't have to be you don't have to be a defence team for someone who's just going through something miserable. It's uh, defence also sort of spans into support, I guess, as well. Yeah. Even for the good things. Good times. So if you could give people watching just one piece of advice, just one, on how to be the best friend you could be, what would it be? No pressure. <laughs> I think just being a good listener. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, I I will be the first to admit that. I sometimes feel uncomfortable giving advice or not knowing what to say, but I think I'm a really good listener. Yeah, just from you a are. personal point of view. And sometimes I don't think, I think sometimes when your friend's just trying to process something, just being there to listen to them, mm. even if you're just like, you know, at the end of a WhatsApp message or, yeah. you know, or a text. Or and voice note, we, voice, yeah. we communicate in voice notes constantly. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I'm surprised, no wonder our phones die like halfway through the day. I think I, I, I must admit, I sometimes struggle with that. Because um, you, you do feel like you need to give someone advice sometimes. You just, mm. And you, you, you really care for that person, you just want to fix it. Yeah. But a lot of the time people need to make their own mistakes and they need yeah. to come to the conclusions on their own. So yeah, I'd, I'd say that's a really good piece of advice. Just yeah. listen, take it all in and maybe sort of, just I think just knowing that your mate's there to yeah. pick you up in the good times and the bad times yeah. at the end of it, you know? Yeah, you, I mean, we're all living our own lives, yeah. so, but just knowing that someone's there on your side just mm. makes it a little bit easier, so yeah. Oh, good advice. We should do this for a living. <laughs> so, recap then on how to be the best friend you can be and really build your strong defence for the people who you care about um, is to be there for them as much as you can, but in different ways. It doesn't have to be face-to-face -face stuff. I mean, we see each other all the time because we live just around the corner and because we want to. <laughs> <laughs> but it's quite easy for us. That restraining order's not working. <laughs> but it's quite easy for us, isn't it? Whereas I think we've both got friends that live quite far away and we don't mm. actually see them yeah. but we're still there for them on the end of the phone or on the end of a voice note yeah. or you know even just tagging them in something funny on Facebook mm. is is saying we are thinking about you or we're there for you so I think that's really important and the main piece of advice was to listen and to not yeah. give too much advice try and sort of help them through it help themselves help them through it does that make sense so I think that everybody needs somebody who's there for them and forms part of their defence. So thank you, Lucy, for being mine. Oh, cheesy! <laughs> so if you guys have got any tips on how to be there for a friend, then please leave them down in the comment section below because I'd love to give them all a read and I think we could all sort of learn from each other with this, can't we? And sort of power through and all try and be the best friends that we can be. But that's it for today. This is video one of three. I'm gonna be talking to two other very special people in my life as well. So if you did enjoy this video, please give it a giant thumbs up. And if you're new, please. click subscribe <laughs> and give Lucy a big well done in the comments. I think you did very well, you wee nervous. 
<laughs> you did so so well but um, I'm gonna be interviewing or interviewing chatting to two more people in two other videos so if you like this one click subscribe make sure you click the notification sign so you get notified every time a new video goes live and keep an eye out for the next two of these but as always thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again soon bye So the defense tea is actually a green... <laughs> I was just like letting off steam. <laughs> you sound like, like a balloon. <laughs>